right, everybody, after some technical difficulties, we are here. Welcome in to a live edition of the Six Rings and Football Things podcast here on WEEI and on Odyssey Sports, presented by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. I am Mike Cadlick, Patriots reporter for WEEI.com, and I am joined by none other than Taylor Kyles from CLNS Media. So, first of all, Taylor, how are you? How's your day been? Pretty long, I assume, but uh, you, you feeling all right? You doing good? Yeah, it's been long but productive, man. Uh, yeah, we uh, practice was fun to watch. Uh, there were some ups and downs for sure. We'll get into that. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, being at Lambeau is pretty nuts, man. It's like you feel the history here. It's pretty intense, and uh, everyone's yeah. been super nice. So, yeah, long day, but it's been a good one so far. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, as I'm sure you all know, Patriots uh, – Practiced at Foxborough Sunday, Monday. They are now out in Lambeau, out in uh, Green Bay, I should say, uh, with the Packers for two joint practices today and tomorrow before their preseason game on Saturday. I, unfortunately, uh, am not there. As you see, I'm in my my at-home studio. But my friend Taylor did take the trip out uh, to Green Bay. So basically what we're going to do is sit here for, you know, a little few minutes and uh, talk about what the heck happened out on the field today uh, at Lambeau. So uh, we have a couple pointers Um if you do want to join, I'm I'm sure there's a there's a chat. Um, this is streaming on our Twitter, uh, EEI Twitter, my Twitter, and then Fitzy's as well. So if you see it and you can throw any questions and you want to, feel free. Uh, but we're basically just going to go through a rundown of what the uh, what happened down in uh, out in Lambo today. So we'll start with what everybody I'm sure wants to talk about, and that is Ezekiel Elliott. The Patriots uh, officially signed Zeke. I believe it was official this morning. Uh, so he was out there on the field rocking that number 15. Uh, in full pads with the rest of the unit. So uh, tell us what you saw from Zeke. I know that um, he, he started practice. He then sort of, I don't know if he left. Again, I'm reading, you know, everyone's reports coming in and out. I don't know if he left, but he didn't really participate later on in team drills. But uh, how did he look? What did you see? Is he integrated fast? Uh, give, give us the lowdown on Zeke. Yeah, so Mac was saying that he was impressed by how quickly like Zeke was trying to get along. I think he was talking to Bill, um, trying to get the playbook and different things like that down. Um, he came with the team and what we saw from him, like you said, I, he was there when they went to the other field and started getting into competitive reps with the Packers. I saw him in the beginning. I don't know if he was there throughout because I was watching the drills and it's impossible as you know, to see everything at once. Um, but we saw him taking, he did uh, ladder drills and different like individual running back drills early on. He, uh, took some handoffs from Mac. I think he also took one from Zappy. Uh, both they did shotgun and under center and then he ran a couple of routes there was an angle route and then there was a rip route where he actually got a compliment from uh max and you know great job and crazy oh yeah you know, must have done that right. report already let's go exactly and uh and then he got some coaching you saw him talk to um saw him talk to Vinny sincere you saw him talk to bill o'brien briefly just you know they, they gotta let him know how things are done in their system so honestly right. not a ton to take away i did think he looked pretty good um would say maybe not like the quickness that he had in his prime. I don't think anybody's expecting that necessarily. Um, but relative to what we saw in film last year, uh, you know, he doesn't have the helmet on or anything like that. Right. So it's nothing too crazy. Uh, but I did think he looked pretty solid um, in very limited reps. Like this is going to so, be something where you look back in a couple of months and you're just like, we were breaking that down. Really? So I don't want to well, get so too into it. But. Yeah, of course. Cause it's only day one, but I guess my, my question and sort of what I go to and think about is like, is he, does he look in shape? Because mm -hmm. I feel like when you when you bring a guy in, I mean, the Patriots just did it with uh, Trey Flowers. Trey Flowers still hasn't practiced. And I don't know if he's on PUP because he's nursing something or if he's just not in shape and they want to give him time. But, yeah. uh, like, it, it, Zeke wasn't, you know, slogging around out there, right? He, he looks he looks no. in shape and ready yeah, to go. Yeah, no, he was moving. He was definitely moving. So I think that once he gets acclimated and really understands the playbook and isn't, like, almost a liability out there just because yeah. he's kind of trying to play catch up. Um, it didn't seem like it was a physical reason that he was at. I think it really is just mental, and they're trying to make sure he's comfortable out there. Right, and I sort of think of, like, running back, too, as uh, not – I mean, football is the most complicated sport on earth, so nothing's truly plug-and-play. But, yeah. again, with Bill talking about going over protections last night, and then I'm sure he's going to have, like – He's going to be in school from this morning when he got there all the way up until Saturday during the game. He probably won't play on Saturday, but, like, they're going to be with him. Max probably going to be by his hip constantly just yeah. learning and going. And I feel like once, you know, once you get the hang of protections and where you're going to be, someone like Zeke, who uh, is good at that stuff anyway, I feel like it'll he'll get integrated pretty quickly. So uh, before we move on, just what's, uh, what is your take then overall on, uh, I guess, on the Zeke sound? I haven't really got your full thoughts. I know that, you know, Mm. It now bumps Pierre Strong down. It bumps Kevin Harris down. 
Um, I, I think we all agree that Ramondre is going to be, you know, that I, I don't like the term bell cow for it because that sort of means all the carries and the reason Zeke's here is for him to not be a bell cow. But right. uh, how do you think it's sort of like, how do you see Zeke best fit in this scheme and what O'Brien wants to do? And also what does it do for the rest of the room? Yeah, so just like kind of piecing together what people were saying, Ramondre Stevenson noted that the Patriots like a tandem at running back. He brought up Damian Harris. And um, I think uh, Max said that they were going to be a good one-two punch, Zeke and Mondre. So yeah. I think there's clearly an expectation that while I think everyone's been talking about, oh, he's a short yardage guy, he's a goal line guy, he's a pass protector where I thought, you know, I think Ramondre will be out there in third and manageable situations when or sure. when you think he can be involved in the route tree. But if it's third and 10 and they really are prioritizing protection, I think that's where Zeke's going to be. So... I I tweeted about it. I'm waiting to see what he does on the field and what he looks like in live reps before saying, oh, yeah, this is going to be like he and Ramondre are switching off drives. Like he really is RB2 uh, the right. way that it was with Damian and Ramondre. I really think it's going to be, you know, I, I think the most moderate expectation is that he's going to kind of mix in on early downs. Obviously, certain situations like, again, I think the short yardage and pass blocking, yeah. that's totally valid and that will be part of his game. But I do think – the Patriots are expecting that he will be someone who can take some of that early download off as well, maybe on first and 10, second downs as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how realistic it is that he's going to be what Damian Harris was for them because Damian, okay. you know, he had his issues, but he was more explosive. The issue right. with him was injuries, and that's why one of the reasons I think the team let him walk. But Zeke gives you consistency where you know he can carry the ball 200 times in a season. That's not even a question because he's done it every season. Um, It's more about how effective he's going to be in those carries and whether maybe Kevin Harris can kind of right. take some of those away from him. Maybe Pierre Strong, as a change of pace back, can take some, some of those away. So I think the more ideal situation in terms of being realistic is that he's going to be in a rotation. Well, I, and I saw you going back and forth with someone on Twitter yesterday, and you compared him to Damian Harris, and someone was mm -hmm. like, well, why would they pay Zeke $6 million and not give Harris the one? And the, you said it best. It's the availability. Because yeah. if he can give you what Harris gave you, but over a 17-game span, that's worth the $6 million they're giving exactly. you. Exactly. So, like, it, and to it, be fair, all, I think the incentives came out today. He's got $2 right. million in incentives, and they, they are not likely to be earned, which means yeah. that – that's if he does get them, they're going to be pushed over to the cap next year. But I think he's got to have like 1,400 yards or something like that, play 70% of the snaps, which is not going to happen if Ramondre right. Stevenson is healthy. So, you know, I, I don't even know I don't know how that even got to the contract and what I was going to say. They feels, were going back and forth, but yeah, I'm sorry. Go on. It, no, it feels like, and, and everyone sort of compared it because the Dalvin Cook deal came in 45 minutes later or whenever it was. Mm -hmm. So everyone thought, like, oh, you know, and started comparing those deals. And, well, why wouldn't you do get Cook at eight versus uh, Zeke at six? But it clearly it looks like they got a steal compared to yeah. uh, what the Jets signed, what the Jets signed Cook for, especially for what they want Zeke to do. Because Cook, uh, look, I don't think he's going to go in there and blow up the locker room. I don't think that's the kind of player Dalvin Cook is. But, like, he still wants to be an RB1, I feel. And they're mm -hmm. going to want to have Brees Hall be their guy and Cook be the backup where Zeke just played RB2 to Tony Pollard for a season was good with it, bought in. So I feel like he's going to have the same mindset here. It just, it, it feels like it makes too much sense to have Zeke here. So uh, I'm excited. Clearly it sounds like he's getting integrated pretty well uh, starting out in, uh, in Green Bay. I know Max said that they met last night and Zeke was in his PJs. So uh, <laughs> looks like good stuff on that front, but let's, uh, let's move on to Mac uh, because mm -hmm. again, his, his first real competition against an opponent because he didn't play in their preseason game. Uh, last Thursday against the Texans. So Max first look at non-Patriots, uh, cornerback, secondary, uh, front seven as well. So um, it sounds like, again, from what I'm reading about what happened today, things started strong in 11 on 11s. Mac had a couple of nice throws to Parker and Juju to, you know, start things off, started cooking, and then it kind of fell flat. Um, yeah. Also uh, seeing something about a, a, I don't know if it was a two minute drive, but it was some sort of like scripted play series, whatever and Belichick chewed him out. So yeah. I don't know if you saw that, um, but overall, how'd Mac look? What do you make of him and Bill sort of going at it? And uh, not, not going at it because, again, that's just coaching. And then when right, we right. see that, we internalize it and make it something it probably isn't. But yeah. nonetheless, there was something there. So what what'd you make of Mac today? How'd he look? And uh, is it his fault? Because we'll get into the offensive line later, but that didn't seem great either. So tell me about yeah. Mac. I'll start with the lowlights. I didn't really think there were many. I think the biggest one right. was like, you know, Belichick and him having the conversation. And yeah. from Mac's tone afterwards, I didn't get the impression that it was like the end of the world or anything. He really just seemed right. like, yeah, we made a mistake. There was miscommunication. We figured it out. I didn't see it personally. I had to ask um, 
Mark Daniels and Dakota okay. uh, Randall, what exactly had happened. And it, they weren't sure if like Kendrick Bourne had slipped on a play or something or what exactly went wrong. Um, but it seemed like they were trying to do that like fire drill field goal kind of situation. Okay. And something must have gone wrong. And Bill was like, no, we need to do this again, both for the Patriots and the Packers, because we think about it from a Patriots perspective, but, right. and this is again, why you don't really want Zeke out there because this is also for the Packers. They're trying to get yeah. better. So you want to make sure that everything is going well. So that when they look at the tape, they have something to go off of and build on. So that was probably the biggest one because I thought other than that, Mac was in complete control and looked really good. The way that we've been seeing him in camp where, okay. you know, he's getting everybody where they need to be and everyone is following his lead. I think that's one of his strengths. And then the worst throw of the day was one that Rasul Douglas should have picked off, where, to be fair, like, we've seen Max's worst throws in camp are either, you know, like an overthrown fade every once in a while, not enough that really you get worried about, or it's like the Kyle Duggar, where he knows he's he trying probably to do too much. Throw. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like, you, he even, I think he understands, I'm not going to do this in a game. Like, I'm just going to see if I can fit this in there. You hope. I can't, like, That's what you hope, right. because right. we saw that a few times last year, and he did try and extend when, and he yeah. talked about it with Malik Cunningham. He was like, I'm not as fast as him, and he said it after practice today, so. Yeah, uh, I mean, and it was it was a play where, like, in a real game, he probably would have been sacked anyway. Like, okay. you saw Juju was coming on a crossing route off play action, and he got open. Mac probably would have been sacked, so I think he tried to step up and just was like, let me try to squeeze this in, and okay. Rasul Douglas came right downhill and almost picked it off. It was one of those where I, I think he, he, I got the vibe of, like, this play wouldn't have counted anyway, so I'm just going to see what I can do. But other than that, I thought he was good. Um, okay. There was really nothing deep, which was both a testament to the – uh, secondary, I'm sorry, the receivers weren't really getting open deep. There were definitely a few pay, plays that looked like coverage sacks, which is, you know, pretty concerning. Again, I think part of that is the fact that the Kendrick Bourne's not a great separator. Devontae yeah. Parker was his best receiver, which, again, we've seen that's pretty consistently the case. And Devontae may not be somebody who separates, but he is going to make those catches. Right, and right. we did see some of that. And there were some times where, like, somebody found soft spot over the middle, he connected, and things like that looked good. Um, but we've seen, like, Demario Douglas is the only guy that they can really consistently rely on to create separation. I didn't see him get a ton of reps. He was okay. really good. He didn't get a ton of reps with the first team, uh, but he had one uh, play on a crossing route that looked really good. Um, and there was another, I can't think off the top of my head, but he definitely flashed on a couple reps where it's like, all right, Demario Douglas, he's still out here. We can okay. still keep our eggs in that basket. You know, we don't know exactly how his ro role is going to work out, but he was looking good out there. Uh, but, yeah, again, I thought Mac was making the throws that were there, but as we'll get into, it's really hard when, as we've seen throughout camp, he can't really go through his progressions or, like, longer developing right. plays don't work because the pressure's getting there so fast. There were times where he just – he, like, ran the ball a couple times, which I didn't think was a great idea. It, it, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it was kind of annoying. It's like, dude, let's – at least like let the play run out and just do something other than run. Cause you're probably only to do that in worst case scenarios. Right. Um, but for the most part, I thought he did his job was in command. Um, it was just the, the parts around him. I thought kind of let him down. That offensive line is going to, it's going to be their, their detriment again, it feels like in last year. And I, I, I'm sure I've spoken with you about this uh, both, you know, on record and off record, just about how look, when they went into this off season, I thought, okay, Last year was bad, but reset the coaches, get, you know, consistent players, build your depth, and hopefully the scheme will fix itself along the line. And that, again, I don't, I don't want to say that doesn't seem to be the case because they haven't really had that health yet. Because, again, yeah. today, and this is this is reading directly from one of your tweets, it was Trent Brown, Antonio Maffi, David Andrews, Riley Reef, and Sidney Sowell on the line. So yeah. two rookies, one guy who's like kind of out of position in Reef because he's normally a tackle. Um, and then Brown and Andrews, who, I mean, those guys are fine, but you're still missing three starters. And uh, that's going to be tough because the the injuries along the line were something that, you know, got in their way last year. And the fact that it's August 16th and we're already at this position is is no bueno. So mm -hmm. um, and I know you were talking, I think I saw it on your Twitter last night too, just how bad would it have to get for them to move Mike Onwenu out to right tackle? But he's not even healthy yet. So, right. like, yeah. it's, it's a big if for, like, when if they, because – Right. Don't know. And then it, you get into the, you know, the, the, the strategy and the contract way of it. Like if on one goes to tackle and he plays well, then he's going to want to be paid as a tackle next year. And then there's no way the Patriots get him. So like it, it gets into that whole thing and, you know, again, what, what truly has to happen, but sacks, sacks galore today, um, five mm -hmm. on Mac, eight on Zappy. That's from Andrew Callahan. So um, doesn't look great. I know. And then when Mac was talking after practice, 
Uh, he sort of gives the line credit no matter what. He's just, you know, doing quarterback speak. Um, but he said that they they looked okay running the ball and that Zeke will be happy with that. that. Was true. How did how, how okay? Offensive line looks good in the run game. Yeah, you notice that pretty early on the ground game, like they were opening up holes. All right, saw I mean, guys something getting, then. Yeah, and like the running backs were getting past the line. That looked good. I tweeted about it. I was like, yeah, no, when they're running and they're built to do that, like Tony Omathi, City So, and Riley Reef, those are some big dudes. So right. if you got to blow open some holes. That's where they're going to be effective, and that's where things are going to make the offensive line look a lot better. Um, but in terms of pass protection, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to look at what coverages are, what the route concepts are. Right. So usually my eyes aren't really in the backfield, but that's it was right. very obvious because you're seeing like, all right, this route's being run, but the ball's not out. Why? Oh, Mac is trying to step up or he's trying to navigate the pocket. Yeah. And that was the case on a lot of these plays. And it's so hard to really judge how to feel about this because, like you said, most of like Riley Reef. Unless they're planning on bringing in Wenu back and sliding him in over City So, which I do think warrants some conversation because you would think that they would have Riley Reef at the tougher spot at tackle. And if anything, for City So, like if it's that bad, he would play yeah. hard or you'd get Jake Andrews, who they also said was a guard. So him kicking inside is very interesting. I don't know how that's going to work out exactly. Um, but beyond that, there were also operational errors. You had a false start. You had a holding penalty. And, you know, the team has been pointing out that they've been playing a lot of clean football. Right. I think there was also an uh, offensive pass interference on Kendrick Bourne, though he seemed to think that it was going to be on the other uh, player. Not totally sure what happened there. I just saw afterwards he was like clapping, and then the ref was like, nope, that's on you. That's on um, 84. <laughs> yeah, so I think on top of the offensive line, that's something that's been an issue. It's not a surprise. Like right. depth is a problem in the entire NFL when it comes to offensive line play. You really just got to hope that your starters can get healthy, and if not, then you can get one or two guys to play above their – you know, expected a floor because you have strong coaching. But beyond that, I thought the bigger storyline was that it was not smooth. There were also times, there was, a, I think, a miscommunication where Kendrick Bourne, like Mac threw over the middle. I think it was to Kendrick Bourne, but it wasn't to really anybody. Um, so, you know, you're also at a new place. Maybe the nerves are high. I don't know, you know, all the excuses you can make. But bottom line was this was easily the sloppiest day of football in terms of not making mistakes and beating yourselves that we've seen from the Patriots, I think, all summer. And that's the stuff that they pride themselves on. And Mike Gesicki talked about it. I think yep. I think we've spoken to him twice this preseason um, mm -hmm. down in Foxborough. And both times he talked about the discipline and how yeah. uh, we're, we're in the room. We know what we're doing. Uh, there's not a lot of penalties. We're on our P's and Q's, and that's how we run our offense. And Gesicki said it too, that that's what this place has prided itself on. So yeah. the fact that the second they get in, in, into, in front of another you know, opponent and this just kind of goes wild is uh, – it's interesting. Again, it's not – like it's not, um, you know, sound the alarms and, you know, this thing's over. Like I get yeah. why people want to think that way. Um, but, again, I, I guess, you know – Give it time, see if you can, you know, rally the troops, whatever you want to call it. But that's again, that's something like was O'Brien out of his mind because you know, teapot. That's, that's I didn't hear him, which is pretty. Okay, I didn't like distinctly hear him say anything, and I don't. I didn't hear that anybody else mentioned it. Okay, and I think it's also important to remember, like this is an offense that started slow. Obviously, that was different because it was redstone and in, redstone and installs which is like the most difficult position you could put an offense in that's building and playing against veterans. But we did see that they got their stuff together, worked on it, made improvements, and then came out and started doing really well in those situations. So, right. and Mac even acknowledged that like when he was talking about the operational error um, in the two minute where they had to repeat a play, he was saying that you need those things. You need to learn from those and, you know, improve upon them. So, I'm going to wait till tomorrow to make any, yeah. you know, strong assessments on how they performed against another team. Because, again, this was the first joint practice. Like, guys were getting kind of rough. There were a couple of situations where guys had to get pulled apart or, you know, coaches got involved or officials. And they were right. like, yo, relax. Like, we're not trying to get anybody hurt or have any fights out here. So, you like to see, all right, you got the film. You know what you need to improve on based on yesterday. Can you tighten it up? Can you, like, have fewer mistakes? And, you know, the offensive line stuff is probably going to carry over. But how do they adjust to that? So right. we'll see tomorrow. Yeah. So, all right, let's get to uh, one more offensive player before we talk mm -hmm. about the defense. And that's Malik Cunningham. Malik mm -hmm. Mania running wild up in the Northeast. Uh, yeah. You know, obviously it's – you sort of have to take it with a grain of salt because, again, I, I do think it's significant the fact that, you know, all of a sudden he has the good week and then he's taken, like, true – even though they're running plays, they're true quarterback mm -hmm. reps with the ones, something we yeah. didn't see for, you know – both two weeks prior and at mini camp. So um, obviously significant, but the fact that he, he's there, what did we see today uh, against an opponent? 
Was he also with the ones again? Was it, is he getting passing attempts, or was it again just just sort of wildcat running plays from coming? It's from pretty much what we've seen. It's like a mix. Okay. He's got, I think he had one or two reps with the starters, and you saw like a, okay. a two zone reads. There was one play where he rolled out. Um, there okay. was motion in the backfield as a play fake. He goes out, and he ended up just tucking it and running. Um, it's. I wish there was more to talk about, but really on the Malik yeah. Cunningham front, it's pretty much it is what it is at this point, where they're clearly trying to mix him in get him comfortable with some of the running packages and mixing in those rollouts and uh, boot actions. Okay. Um, but that's that's pretty much all it was. I think he got at least one rep with the starters, but there were also some times where he was with the backups as well. Um, not really as a passer, more as a running threat. Oh, all right. Well, that's something. Again, it's something because it – and they asked Mac Jones about it today after uh, after practice, and he was like, yeah, they don't think I'm that fast yet. So to see him, it was you know, pretty good. So it, it adds an out. They don't yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, uh, it adds an element, which is something you don't, you don't always see here because when it was Brady for all those years, you never want to take the ball out of his hands. And, mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, everyone ends up comparing Mac Jones to Tom Brady for better, for worse, if it's right or not. But like, that's a guy who, you know, if you want to run a wildcat, it's, it's okay to take Mac off the field for a play if you want to, you know, change the pace. So, uh, good to see from Cunningham. So let's roll into the defense. Uh, we'll hit a few things and then I'll get you out of here because I know, uh, you have uh, a lot more stuff to get to today uh, out in Lambeau. So uh, we won't keep you for too long here, Taylor. Uh, let's talk about Marte Mapu, the linebacker, the rookie, linebacker safety, uh, hybrid defender that obviously Bill Belichick knows and loves. There's been plenty of them around here. He finally uh, was out of his non-contact uh, red jersey today. So mm -hmm. uh, for those who haven't been following along, Marte Mapu, third round pick for the Patriots, uh, working through a torn pectoral muscle that he suffered while training this off season before the draft, uh, was in a red non, red non contact Jersey for, uh, the entirety of mini camp and training camp. But first day of, uh, padded joint practices today, he is uh, full go. So mm -hmm. where did he line up on defense? Was he, with the, was he with the backers? Was he with the safeties? Uh, how'd he look? Did he get a lot of reps? I know that they were, I know we're not supposed to talk about, you know, starters and backups, so we'll be as, you know, vague as we can uh, to please please the Patriots. But uh, was he getting significant reps? Was he out there with them and uh, rolling like he was over the last few weeks? Yeah, full disclosure, my defensive takeaways are kind of limited because they were practicing on different fields. So I was mostly okay. looking at the offense because, you know, that's – most people are asking about because we know what the defense is pretty much at this point. Sure. Um, when I did see – and then also the way that they have a standing is like we're right on the sideline. And that wall of players that we always get was really, oh, yeah. really bad with the okay. defense. Like there was an entire series with the start starters where I'm like, I have no idea where anybody is. I don't know what well, happened. Well, we're going to do – we're going to go quick on Mapu. And then when we talk yeah. cornerbacks, it's a little less analysis and it's more so just the, the shape of the room. So yeah, but double to Mapu, Mapu and then – yeah. Yeah. I saw him mostly at uh, – Everything's falling apart. Um, Mapu, I mostly saw at linebacker. I will say that. Um, okay. Saw him, like, got a couple of mug looks where he's kind of, like, in the A-gap and then drops. Um, it looked like he was more in the mold of, like, what Mac Wilson was doing for them, where he was more their athletic linebacker. Um, couldn't really see extensively how they were using him, but from what I saw, I didn't notice him on the back end or anything. It seemed more like that was Jalen Mills, a little bit of Marcus Bryant, kind of a Joshua Bledsoe territory. But, yeah, Mapu, I think he actually played in the position that he's listed as, and it was mostly linebacker action. Yeah, then that that's when it's then that's when it's okay to report on it. That's like yeah. the Cunningham <laughs> stuff. When, when, when Cunningham goes under center on, on Sunday, we're all like, what do we do? How do we talk about it? It's like, exactly. look at the roster. He is a quarterback. We right. can talk about whatever we want. But technically, we weren't supposed to call him a receiver this whole time. But uh, So, yeah, Mapu as a linebacker, uh, interesting. It's it's Again, it's good to see him. Uh, out of the non-contact jersey because that just mm -hmm. means that he'll be uh, obviously ready to roll come week one because yeah. we've seen it. He's going to be a part of this defense at some point in some way uh, soon because they're just – they're rolling him right in. So let's talk cornerbacks and then we'll get out of here because Jonathan Jones, absent again. Mm -hmm. Jack Jones uh, in Green Bay. His court date got pushed back a month. So it looks like he'll at least start the season with the team. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Christian Gonzalez uh, – Again, I, I don't know if it was you who said it, but he did get uh, – I don't know if he got beat, but a, a throw was thrown over him from to Christian Watson with somebody else in coverage. I think someone said – it might have been Aaron Nagler from uh, Green Bay out there who said that it wasn't actually Gonzalez's coverage and he just kind of turned back yeah. to go try and catch him. So um, a lot to talk about in the cornerback room, but let's just start with Jonathan Jones because I believe this is now 12 practices in a row that he mm -hmm. has in practice. Um, from yeah. what I'm hearing, it's minor. 
but it's been almost two weeks or it's been over mm-hmm. two weeks now. So what do you make of it? Uh, do you, are you worried yet? Like what, what do you make of him just not being out there? Because he's a guy that they're going to rely, they're going to have to rely on, especially with Jack Jones. So, so much up in the air. I didn't even know it was minor until now. So with hearing right. that, I actually think it's a good thing. You know what you have in Jonathan Jones. Like he's someone I think yeah. you plug in and he'll be fine. It's similar to like a Cole Strange situation where this is, I mean, he's obviously not as established where I think his, he's a more of a situation where they're like, we do not want to risk him getting hurt at all. It's not worth it. Um, yeah. So with Jonathan Jones, I think I would believe that they're just saying, hey, We've got a pretty deep cornerback room, and all these guys are really young. So there's more yeah. value in getting Marcus Jones and Jack Jones some pretty much needed reps against this type of competition than it would be for Jonathan Jones, where okay, Jonathan Jones get, like loses to Christian Watson on a jump ball. Oh wow, like you know, it's yeah, you understand right, right. you're not really learning anything from having Jonathan Jones out there necessarily. So you'd like to get those reps to some of your young players. So now knowing that it is minor, I'm not really worried about it. I think it's a good idea to. Again, okay. let your young guys get more experience and take care of your veteran who's closer to the end of his career than he is at the beginning. Okay. Um, so that's John Jones. Uh, Jack Jones, how'd he look today? Christian Gonzalez. Talk about that more so because mm-hmm. um, I know that, that, again, I heard it on sports radio. So you know, you know how that goes uh, in, the, in, this, <laughs> in this business. But, oh, Christian Gonzalez all of a sudden doesn't, doesn't look good. He's getting toasted by Christian Watson and he's not the sauce gardener we all thought he was. Talk us through that. How did he look? Um, because obviously he's playing against, you know, two pretty good receivers in Watson, in Dobbs, uh, with Jordan Love, who's, you know, coming on himself. So uh, is is Christian Gonzalez ready? What, what, did you, what did you see from him? What did you make of that play specifically? Yeah, so, par- so from what I saw, it looked like they were in a cover four or quarters defense where Christian Gonzalez actually made a heads-up play. There was an underneath route that he was defending, and then whether he saw Jordan Love throw it or, you know, had a feeling that it was coming – he broke off of his coverage and actually got underneath the throw, which is why it might have looked like he got beat. But I think what actually happened was Jalen Mills at safety, I think, got beat across his face. So, I mean, to be fair, this was a dot from Jordan Love, like a really pretty throw where one placement was perfect. And it was kind of like a Russell Wilson pass where it just hangs up there for a long time. And it's hard for a defender to play because it looked like Gonzalez thought that he could make a play on the ball and was running and looking at it. Probably should have played the hands. I think that's where he made his mistake because he's a fast guy. If he were looking and trying to punch the ball out when it got into Watson's hands, I think it would have been an incompletion. But he was trying to make a play, and I think it was just up there for so long. The longer you're looking back and running, the more ground you're going to give. And then it was just right in the hole between him and Jalen Mills. He caught it, and then it looked like Watson just ran away for a touchdown. So I'm not putting that on Gonzalez. I think maybe a coaching moment and you know, in that situation – Again, tough because of the flight of the ball, but maybe just go for the the punch out or make the tackle afterwards because Christian Watson was able to run away afterwards. Now, there was another play where he allowed a slant to Romeo Dobbs. I don't even know if he knew, like, was ready for it because he seemed like he wasn't really trying to defend it. And Dobbs just caught it in front of him and he looked a little bit confused. So that was a strange rep. And then the next play, there was a deep shot that Jordan Love overthrew to Dobbs, uh, but it looked like Gonzalez was in pretty tight coverage, especially later right. on in the route. So from him, don't you know freak out about the big play that he uh, gave up. I think especially I would need to look at the actual film to know how badly right. Jalen Mills maybe got beat. But it's like Christian Watson on a crossing route. That's a really tough play to defend for any safety period. Um, Jack Jones started off the competitive drills from what I saw with a really good recovery, actually. He got beat deep and then uh, did a good job finding the ball and broke up the pass. Then later on, there was a play where he started jawing with one of the receivers, and they got into a yeah, shot on that real okay. quick. Yeah, and then that had to get broken up. He looked pretty pissed off. And then oh, on the gosh. next play, it was another just beautiful pass this time from Sean Clifford, the Packers' backup, where he dropped it in the bucket to Malik Hyatt, I think. Okay. I don't. I'm not positive what his name is. I'm sorry. No, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not really well versed on the Packers. Like thirty rookie fourth receivers. receivers. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, dude. Like they have so like it's kind of funny. We've taken like three Ubers, and every time a driver brings up a Packers rookie, where I'm like, I've never heard of this person. That's you guys hilarious. Really know your football. Um, yeah. But yeah, they, I was looking through their depth chart the other day. I was writing a quick piece on Gonzalez, and I'm looking through like who he'll have to face off against this week, and it's. It's Dobbs, it's Watson, who are young. They're st- they're really good, but they're young. And then the rest of them are like like you said, all rookies and guys who like I haven't even heard of before. So they, yeah. they have a lot to develop down there. But sorry, continue. yeah, no, you're good. Um, but yeah, there was a drop in the bucket. I wouldn't really put it on 
Jack Jones, he was like running stride for stride. It was just right in front of the receiver. Um, but he seemed to think that it was incomplete and had a conversation with the ref again. Like, you know, Jack Jones is a really passionate person. Yes. So that one, you know, it was maybe a little too much passion when you're talking to an official. Um, but I thought overall he had a solid day. I didn't really see right. any like bad misses from him or anything. Um, like Jordan Webb had a few good plays, but for the most part, he did a good job just dinking and dunking and kind of hitting them underneath. I think Marcus Jones allowed a couple completions underneath, like to slants where kind of just got bodied out, which you expect against Marcus Jones. Right. Um, but yeah, I thought the secondary for the most part did a good job. It was just, they let that one deep ball go where it was just a beautiful, beautiful. Throw yeah. Jordan Webb. And that's what you can again, expect from a guy who is a former first round pick. Like those are the plays they're just going to make. And I don't know if you, you've watched hard knocks yet, but um like the Jets defensive coordinator was saying, that play is a play that only Aaron Rodgers will make, and he's our mm -hmm. quarterback. So, like, again, I'm not going to sit here and compare love to Rodgers, but quarterbacks make good plays sometimes. There's still good coverage, and they just drop a dime. Like, that's the stuff yeah, that you exactly. can't really – the point is you can't really control that. So, mm -hmm. um, that's going to do it. Uh, Taylor, thank you for joining me. Um, I appreciate it. I know again, you've, uh, you've had a busy couple of days. You got a busy one tomorrow. Make sure to follow Taylor, uh, on Twitter at T Kyle's 39 CLNS media's, uh, NFL analyst and Patriots beat reporter. He does a fantastic job getting in the weeds on all the film and, uh, really making football very digestible, uh, for the fans. So, uh, follow along with him, Taylor. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, that's what happened down in, uh, out in Lambeau today. Um, on six rings, Fitzy. And Hart will be back tomorrow uh, with another edition of Six Rings and Football Things uh, with another guest, uh, I believe, out in Lambeau. Uh, we'll, I'll tease that and kind of just leave that open-ended. But make sure to follow along, follow at Six Rings Pod on Twitter. Rate, review, subscribe, wherever you find it, wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen on the Odyssey app. And uh, a reminder that Six Rings is now presented by FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So uh, if you want to get, uh, get your wager on, go to FanDuel Sportsbook as well. So uh, thank you again. We will talk to you soon. And uh, thanks for listening, everybody.